How's it going everybody? This is Travis Platt Reviews and today we're going to be taking a look at the third studio album by alternative rock band Boston Manor, Glue. Boston Manor is an alternative rock band from Blackpool United Kingdom formed in 2013. As of recording, the band has over 500,000 monthly listeners on Spotify alone. They combine elements of rock, alternative rock, emo, and grunge into a unique blend of music. The band started out as a pop punk band in their first two EPs, Driftwood and Sodade, the latter being their debut with current label Pure Noise Records. Their debut album, Be Nothing, which released in 2016, exposed them to international markets and an appearance on Van's Warp Tour. In 2018, their sophomore album Welcome to the Neighborhood was released, being a massive departure of the pop punk sound in favor of a grungy alternative rock style that we still see today. This album is a loose concept album talking about a fictitious version of the band's hometown, filled with drugs, sex, and crime. This shift in sound benefited the band greatly as Halo, the lead single from the album, was the band's first top 10 rock radio single in the United States and as of recording is still their most popular song. At the end of 2019, the band had their biggest United States headline tour to date, with support from Microwave, Heart Attack Man, and Selfish Things, all bands that have abandoned their pop punk roots. If you'd like to see me make a video on the shift in sound of all of these bands, comment below. I first heard of the band in 2015 when I first heard their song Trap Nerve, which was on their EP Sodade, and I really knew that there was something special about this band. When Be Nothing, their debut full length was released, I was blown away with the aggression in songs like Burn You Up, Stop Trying, Be Nothing, and Lead Feet, but also the emotional side in songs like Laika, Fossa, and Forget Me Not. I got to see them twice during this album cycle, the first being at Vans Warp Tour 2017 in Scranton, PA, and I got to meet members of the band as well as John from Trophy Eyes that day. The energy from Boston Manor was a highlight of that very long day, and they became one of my favorite live bands from that moment on. I got to see them again on their United States headline tour of Be Nothing in 2018, with support from Free Throw, Home Safe, Hot Mulligan, and Safe Face. The date I attended was at Cativo in Pittsburgh, a 350 capacity venue. This show had a stacked lineup and Boston Manor closing the show was incredible. They opened with the song that first introduced me to the band, and they played Be Nothing almost in its entirety, before pretty much retiring most of it once the next album cycle started. Welcome to the Neighborhood was easily in my top three albums of 2018, and I was blown away with how the band matured in two short years. This album is absolutely near perfect. Every song has its place on the album with no filler whatsoever, and the dark tone yet the easily listenable hooks contrast each other so well, especially in the songs Stick Up, If I Can't Have It No One Can, and Bad Machine. I could honestly talk about this album for hours, so if you'd like to see me review that album in full, go ahead and comment it below. I got to see the band live five times during the Welcome to the Neighborhood cycle. The first being when the band was direct support for Real Friends. Grayscale and Eat Your Heart Out opened the show. The show I went to was at the Rex Theater in Pittsburgh, a 600 capacity venue. This show was great to hear the songs from the album I love live. I then got to see the band live twice in May of 2019. The first was at Mr. Small's in Millville when they were direct support for Movements. Trash Boat and Drug Church opened the show. The second time was at Sonic Temple Music Festival in Columbus, Ohio. These shows made me realize how popular the band was becoming, and the underground pop punk band I knew was no more, and they were making a name for themselves. The following month I saw them open for A Day to Remember on the Raising Hell in the Heartland tour at Express Live Outdoors in Columbus, a 5200 capacity venue. Knocked Loose also played the show. This was one of my favorite concerts and favorite lineups of 2019, and this tour exposed the band to so many new fans. The most recent time I saw the band was in November 2019 on their headline tour, with support from Microwave, Heart Attack Man, and Selfish Things. The date I went to was at the Foundry in Philadelphia. This was the biggest US headline tour the band had to date, and it was a great experience seeing all four bands.
This album had five singles. The first single off of the album is Liquid, the second to last song on the album. This song features John Florenti, the vocalist for the band Trophy Eyes. This collaboration is a long time coming as the two bands have toured together constantly. This song has a lot of radio rock influence and a very catchy hook for a chorus, and the rap inspired bridge is very well executed. This more melodic inspired approach from the band is a very nice feeling of fresh air, especially in the context of the album, which does not have many easy listens. John's feature is solid, though I wish we could have heard some unclean vocals from him, and the harmonization with Henry's screams would have been amazing, but we can hope for another day. The second and lead single off of the album is the opening track, Everything is Ordinary, which received very mixed opinions from fans and critics for having a very muddy mix and an excessive use of vocal manipulation on Henry's voice, which originally I wasn't a fan of, but to me this song is very catchy and fun. It reminds me a lot of what is coming out of the UK rock scene, similarly to People by the 1975. This song is definitely a grower though. The third single is On a High Ledge, one of the ballads on the album. This song is very dark lyrically, discussing toxic masculinity and how it affects young boys. The repetition of the title in the chorus is haunting, and this song was where I noticed the dark nature of the album. The fourth single is Rap King, which has my favorite groove on the entire album. It is near impossible to listen to this chorus without headbanging along. This song has an infectious bass line, one of my favorite vocal deliveries from Henry. The fifth and final single is Plasticine Dreams, the third track on the album, which is a very 90s inspired rock song which seems to be a lot of influence on this album. This song, like Everything is Ordinary, explores the mixing, which seems to be more of an instrument than a creative decision, and that is in the best way possible. Usually I try to keep my personal bias out of these reviews, but this band has continued to blow me away with every single release they've had. This band is leading the charge for a new wave of music, taking inspiration from so many genres and creating something fresh and unique. As mentioned previously, this band experiments heavily with the mixing in the majority of the album, especially in tracks Ones and Zeros, Everything is Ordinary, and Brand New Kids. Ones and Zeros has one of the heaviest choruses, instrumentally and lyrically, and it prepares you for a 51 minute experience of heavy subject matter and dark tones. This is displayed the most in tracks You, Me, and the Class War, Playing God, and On a High Ledge. This band has replaced almost every aspect of an easy listen from their previous work into an album that is very meant for a focused listen, rather than one in passing. The band speaks of many issues facing their lives, including friends and family suffering from alcoholism, toxic masculinity, suicidal thoughts, and many more. The song Terrible Love talks about a toxic and abusive relationship and how that warps your own self-perception. Although this album is a tough listen for some, there are still a lot of strong hooks and catchy moments where the Boston manner we know and love shines through, as seen in the song Rap King. The chorus of the song is very inspired by previous work, but the guitar work and electronics used are very different, and these are some very great changes allowing the album to feel fluent with tone and energy, despite this album having many peaks and valleys. Boston Manor has always been a very solid band instrumentally, but with the addition of the grunge influence noticed on this album, it allows the bass and percussion to be at the forefront of the songs a lot more than in previous works. My favorite example of this being in Only One, which is my personal favorite track on the album. It has an infectious bass line, a fantastic use of vocal harmonies, and a very nice use of unclean vocals used as transitions from stanza to stanza in the verses. I also believe that Monolith, the closing track, is the best closing track the band has ever released. Showing an incredible amount of rage towards everyone and everything, and this could include former people in the band's lives, the political figures in the world, or really anyone. And these vague songs can bring the listener association to any person or time in their life where they felt truly angry. This is also the most aggressive Henry has ever gotten vocally, and it is amazing to hear this pure aggression in his voice. And hearing how this moment of anger dissolves into a piano ballad is beautiful, as it feels like a calm after a raging storm. 
It feels as the band has vented all of their frustrations out and are calming down, which is a very soothing feeling for anyone to go through. As I've listened to this album over and over again, I try to think about what my favorite Boston Manor album is. Each album has their own place as something special, but watching them progress over the years into a truly unique band is wonderful to see. Boston Manor released an album unlike anything I've ever heard, and a personal album of the year contender. Thanks for watching.